So, I, I'm. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> uh, I'm very glad to have a chance of my presentation in the conference, and I appreci appreciate uh, organizer for such opportunity. So the, the title of my talk is on you know, regularity for chemotaxis navier stokes equation. Um, so this is a joint work with the Myungju Che, uh, who are the faculty in Hangyang University, Jiun Lee in Chungang University, he is in there. And Giam Lee is the professor in Seoul National University. Um, so um, my collaborator and myself have been interested in some regularity question of uh, certain models, which is the couple system of the chemo equation, actually kehler Siegel type equation, which will be described more precisely, and also coupled to the Navier-Stokes fluid equation, in particular Navier-Stokes equation. Okay, and um, okay, so next. Oops, something wrong. Okay, <laughs> maybe go back. Okay, control. Okay. Yep. Um, so the the plan of my talk is as follows. Um, in these presentations, um, we have obtained recent progress, I mean progress recently about the regularity issues and also time decay of the mothers. So let me give some firstly motivations and then review some related uh, result uh, and state the main result and then give the sketch of the proof. Maybe just the main idea how we prove um, how the proof goes. So the the Keller-Siegel Navier-Stokes equation. So simply let me denote from now on KS and SE. Uh, it's, a, it's a mathematical model describing the dynamics of certain biological organism. In particular, that is the uh, the names of the bacteria is Bacillus subtilis, which lives in fluid consuming oxygen. So um, this, uh, this biological phenomenon is already observed in the experiment, but the mathematical formulation was done by uh, some previous models, but uh, this models, actually this is non-dimensional versions of this, but uh, Duvalis and his collaborator in PNAS in, in this year, I mean 2005, so it's a quite, quite new models, I guess. And so as I said before, um, this equation, I mean this nonlinear equation is just models showing the dynamics of the swimming bacteria, bacillus subtilis. So um, here is uh, some unknowns where uh, N is the uh, indicating the density, I mean concentrations of the bacteria. Um, uh, simply speaking, I'm not good at the biology, but the bacillus subtilis lives in fluid, in particular, you know, just water. And then um, the movement, so the dynamics of this is the affected by the concentrations of oxygen. Actually, uh, it moved to a higher gradient, high, high gradient of the oxygen. So, the, uh, so one of the other uh, unknown is the uh, C, uh, which is the oxygen concentration. And also, this bacteria live because it lives in the fluid, so it's uh, governed by the fluid motions. So, uh, in particular, in here, the formulation is made uh, under the assumption that it lives in the incompressible fluid, in particular in water. So, uh, this Navier Stokes equation also coupled. Um, so, if you look at the, uh, the coupling, is made in this way. So, for instance, if you look at this, this is, I, th I think the, most of you this morning. Um, already at least uh, so that an equation keller Siegel types. So he, this is not exactly chemotactic sensitivity because uh, it depends on concentrations of oxygen. So I think the, in the, in, in, as far as remember in the paper uh, of the Duval said, they, uh, they mentioned the names of this is motility of the Concent oxygen concentration or something, but uh, for convenience, because the structure of the mechanism is uh, similar to the Keller's equation, so from now on, I, I'm just uh, saying that typically 
because it is called as a chemotactic sensitivity. So from now on, uh, I'm just saying this is a chemotactic sensitivity, even if C is not a chemical concentration. So, uh, but uh, typically, chi is assumed as a constant, but here is uh, actually according to experiment, it's in general, it's not a constant, actually, uh, functions of C depending on the concentrations of oxygens. And there is another important um, parameter, which is uh, consumption rate. Um, one of the uh, things you have to keep in mind compared to classical Taylor Seeger equation is um, the classical Taylor Seeger equation actually, it also shows some aggregation phenomena. But uh, in such case, the chemicals are produced by the uh, uh, dictyostellium discordium, so which is uh, one of the types of amebo, right? But here, uh, actually, um, it's a bit different because the, uh, here the C is uh, oxygen, which is uh, consumed by the N. So one dif big difference is the sign. It's a negative sign because it's a con consumed. I mean, it's a uh, uh, depletion is, is made by N. Uh, so the rate is also depending on C. Mm -hmm. And then, Nevestoks is also coupled to N. Uh, this is uh, basically a Bushinesque approximation. Uh, you may think two different types of fluid because the bacteria are involved, but uh, uh, there, uh, if, the, uh, if the, uh, the difference of the, the density is not in a way negligible, then you can have uh, such a um, Bushinesque approximation. So, uh, is that the way all these guys uh, cover each other? Uh, so we have uh, five unknowns. I mean, I I if you think this problem in three dimensions, okay? But uh, maybe, so our interest is actually two dimensions. So, so we say two, four unknowns. N is the uh, one of unknowns. C is also oxygen, is also unknowns. U is the velocity field. So, Incompressible, also piece, the pressure is also unknown. Anyway, um, in a way, as I said before, myself and my collaborator are interested in the, some regularity issues of this equation. Um, so, in, when it comes to the Navier Stokes equation, two dimensions is already known, solutions are regular. However, in this case, uh, it's not that simple. For instance, uh, when it comes to Keller Seeger equation, it's a bit different compared to. Classical Keller Seeger type, but the classical case, uh, even, even in the two dimensional case, there is uh, some initial data which shows a blood already mentioned this morning, right? There is, uh, but uh, when it comes to Navier Stokes case, 2D case is fine. I mean, solutions are regular. 3D is an open problem, but three, uh, 2D is okay. Uh, so it's not clear. Uh, of course, as I said, as I mentioned before, the one big difference is uh, this is a consumption case, so signs are uh, definitely opposite, which is, I think, the uh, eventually we uh, realize that this is really important when it comes to the regularity methods. In fact, so the, uh, under the reasonable, I mean, empirical assumptions of the all parameters, and we recently proved that this system has a regular solution as long as the initial data is sufficiently regular. Uh, that's, our, uh, that's our main goal of this presentation. Uh, okay, so let me move to, uh, just for convenience, convenience of your understanding, let me prepare some uh, experimental pictures. Uh, sorry for the, <laughs> you know, the, it's maybe not clear, but uh, I just uh, copy this some pictures from the paper. Um, so what is observed in the experiment, actually if you drop, I mean if you drop the water on the plate, then um, initially, because it so somehow initially is well stirred, so the all distributions of the bacteria is uh, uniformly distributed, but uh, you see uh, later uh, this black line somehow the higher concentrations of the bacteria because uh, uh, the density of the oxygen is uh, higher uh, in the top, I mean the, near the surface, compared to the bottom. So, uh, as I mentioned before, bacteria uh, somehow prefer higher concentrations of oxygen. They are moving up to the surface, so they are going so, um, moving so on again and again. But uh, here, uh, later, the, the mechanism is more difficult than expected. Not only the concentration up to the surface, but also 
certain geometry is somehow involved because uh, uh, what is observed here is the, the speed of the fluid is uh, different compared to the geometry. Uh, at, actually, at the tip, it's uh, faster than the flat part of the surface. So that means uh, because of the in in incompressibility of the fluid, I mean velocity, so certain types of photicity uh, uh, developed. That is what is observed here. And here is not clear, but uh, uh, eventually all, all the, uh, most of the bacteria is highly concentrated at the tip of the drops at the end. Okay? And also, you know, the, uh, compared to the fluid density, the density of the bacteria is uh, what, uh, higher than the fluid, actually, according to the experiment, 10% higher than the, just the pure water. So, um, okay, next, one, I have one other pictures. Uh, this is a snapshot of the experiment. Uh, so this is similar to the well-known Rayleigh Taylor types instability, which is somehow if you have a two different types of fluid which has a different density, then uh, in particular the, 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 the fluid with a higher density is above, located above than the other, then these types of uh, instability is occur, right? Uh, situation is a, a bit different, but uh, here actually um, the, the, the top of the surface, the higher concentrations of the bacteria is uh, there. The density is uh, higher than the pure water, so the plums are forms and going down. And in the, the bottom is uh, the concentration of oxygen is quite rare. So then the mushroom shapes are forms. That's the experiment. And then what is observed is actually this process repeat again because uh, later they are going up, looking for the actions, and so on and so on, right? Well, on the surface, the, somehow the, on the free surface, uh, the actions are provided, and so on. Okay, that's what is observed. And there are also, also some numeric ex experiments. I think that this picture is not in the, uh, not, uh, not done by these people. Actually, this is a snapshot of the previous um, experiment, but they, but I just copied these pictures from the paper, but the, what they do is they, they did some numeric simulation for this uh, experiment. Anyway, um, but <laughs> I'm not going to uh, show this uh, result by the analytic way, uh, because uh, all this is uh, just, I think, the relatively new. And then the basic questions are, was unknown, for instance, existence, regularity, uniqueness, and so on and so on. Actually, these equations are highly nonlinear. And uh, the similarity occurs, I mean, like uh, Keller-Zeger, one hand Keller-Zeger, on the other hand, fluid equation. So it's a bit complicated. Okay, next. Okay. So let me briefly mention the uh, I think that maybe I, I can skip the, this part, but uh, just in case. Um, classical Taylor Seeger models, uh, as you know, is like this. Uh, you can compare to our case uh, if you assume that the fluid is not involved. So in the absence of fluid, our equation looks like this, as I mentioned before. One big difference here is the, uh, we have a minus sign with the uh, consumption rate, which is non-constant. Here are the uh, classical Taylor Seeger models is uh, because the chemicals are produced, so plus sign, okay? And uh, so what is known is the blow up even occurs in two-dimensional case um, initial, if the initial mass is beyond some critical values, like a per pi, sorry, <laughs> eight pi, <laughs> okay? Eight pi divided by chi, sorry, <laughs> okay? <laughs> yep. And this is uh, the, the original result was done by Jaeger and Lukaus. The case, in the case, the parabolic elliptic types, uh, and then later parabolic parabolic case also occurred. In, even in 2D case, the blows up in general is cut, but it depends on the size of the initial mass. Okay, but uh, our case is a bit different because uh, maybe it's similar, looks like similar. Actually, the first equation, there was no big difference. Uh, some cases, people take the, this just constant chi is chemotech sensitivity. In general, it depends on concentration of oxygen, but they assume this is just constant. 
uh, which make the problem easier. However, uh, the difference is a negative sign. I mean, um, this consumption rate cannot be constant uh, for some reason. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense. So actually, one of the uh, assumptions I mean, should be made is that that guy should be zero at, the, at the zero. I mean, when c is zero, this should be zero. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense. OK, that's necessary assumption I mean, hypothesis. And, but when it comes to these equations, uh, definitely when it comes to regularity method, you think that this is much better than this. I mean, even if it has uh, blows up, in to the dimension? Maybe, maybe not. But uh, it was not easy. Actually, um, this is uh, one of the types of so-called angiogenesis types of the Keller-Siegel type, because it's minus sign. Typically, the, uh, the typical types of angiogenesis, as far as I know, is OD types, like a second equation is uh, just a time dependent. Of course, it, depending on space and time, but uh, there was no Laplacians, and so this is typical types of angiogenesis type, but um, regularity is also not easy. Okay. But our results also show that the two-dimensional case, the solutions are regular. You will see later. Okay, so the life actually classical Keller-Siegel described the life cycle of the dictyous slim discordium, so probably most of you are familiar with this, but just in case, let me briefly explain um, the life cycle of the dicty. So it, uh, is, it is said that it has a four different status of the life cycle of the dicty. So the, 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 the first state is the vegetation status. So that means th nothing particular. I mean, uh, the food is uh, sufficient, so just normally distribute, they growing. But uh, at certain point, if there is no sufficient food, then starvation occurs, and then the certain mechanisms occurs, actually aggregation, aggregation status occurs. Namely, um, what is observed is they produce the chemicals and, and aggregations occurs. So the classical Taylor signal model is one of actually model describing to this behavior. Uh, from the vegetation status to aggregation status, as far as I know. And then they form some mounds and fingers sometimes, slugs, and they move to a new places. And then they form, uh, uh, this is a migration status. And then they form a, a body, fruiting bodies, uh, which has uh, two different cell types. So one forms a spores and the other stock cells. Eventually, release. Suppose release the. Uh, oops. Yeah. Release the uh, uh, dicty again. So repeat this cycle again and again. So it doesn't take too long. Uh, I heard that it's a uh, 24 hours. You see in the lab. So okay, that's the life cycle of the dicty. Um, so uh, as far as I understand, the the, the Keller-Siegel models are. Uh, was introduced to describe certain behavior, in particular aggregation from the vegetation status to aggregation status. Okay, okay, okay. So I just copied the uh, aggregation pictures from the Wikipedia. I think that there are lots of movies regarding these formations of the fruiting bodies or aggregation effect. Okay. So uh, when it comes to the our model so-called KS and SC equations. Um, so the mathematical results, firstly, was done Duan, Loss, and Markovich, um, who uh, showed that global existence of the weak solution, weak solution means uh, entropy solution, under the assumptions, uh, uh, under the assumption of this. Uh, uh, so the chi is, what is observed, actually, uh, I have to mention later, but maybe, it's better to introduce the, uh, some e experiment observation regarding the two parameters. Uh, so there are, uh, as I said before, there are two important parameters, one of the which is the chemotactic sensitivity, chi's and kappa. Kappa is the consumption rate. Um, so what is observed in the experiment in the, the paper of Dubars and his collaborator, they said that um, uh, in the paper, of course, they, are, they do some numeric simulation, but uh, uh, so, Based on the experiment, the, uh, there is a, some certain threshold, C star, so that uh, above that, uh, it is activated, otherwise deactivated. So um, chi C and then kappa C is uh, just uh, indicator functions they took. 
in the paper. So just characteristic function with a different weight. Um, but uh, I think the uh, so the basically th this car is in copper maybe smooth, but uh, because uh, in from the observations, uh, is I think this reasonable this positive, and the increasing functions, but uh, this assumptions in a way is uh, technical. I would say um, what I mean is the at least uh, it seems to me that there are no meaning, no interpretations of biological explanations regarding this the ratio, second derivative of, uh, of this ratio has a sign. Of course, uh, in the proof, and what they, in, in their proof, uh, this condition in a way is crucial to have a estimate, but uh, yeah, but uh, we don't have any biological. So actually, I would, the motivations of, the, of this study uh, we try to try to remove these assumptions because uh, uh, the doesn't seem too reasonable why this kind of assumption should be made to have uh, existence or regularity and so on. Okay, that's our motivation at the beginning, and also there are some results, kind of a small perturbation of the steady state and so on. But in a way, so all this. Uh, kind of a small data result, which means small data keeps global existence. Of course, this is not a small data result, but uh, it's a perturbation of the steady state. Anyway, uh, by the way, the, the Winkler uh, proved that two-dimensional case, the global existence of regular solution in a bounded domain case under this system. I have to be more precise, but uh, the, the point is that these conditions are also assumed. Uh, which, uh, which we somehow wish to avoid okay, in our study. Okay. So uh, I think the, uh, the establish of the local regular solution is not so difficult <coughs> as, as long as the uh, in initial data are sufficiently regular. So, um, so what the, the, the first step we, t we have done is the we establish the local regular solution. So the, under the assumption, I mean, every parameter is uh, smooth uh, as a function of C, and the initial data are sufficiently regular. Uh, by the way, uh, I didn't mention this phi, but uh, phi is a given function, which actually, if you remember the equations of the fluid, then the fluid equation has the, uh, 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 the density, I mean, N, right, in the right-hand side. Uh, so basically, uh, this is a business approximation so that uh, in, the, in that papers, uh, the phi actually nothing but gravitational force, but uh, could be constant, so, but uh, in general, we assume just a nice functions, either constant or smooth functions, sufficient regular, so it's not unknowns. Okay, um, so we can establish the uh, regular solution for a short time. Uh, so, okay. Here is a, uh, the remark which I mentioned before. So, kappa and kha is a constant. So, what is observed is there is some threshold so that uh, uh, before, below that, inactivated, but above that, activated. So, um, in, the, in the paper of the Tubers and his collaborator, uh, they took the form of the solution, sorry, the parameter like that. So just indicate I mean, characteristic function, but with a different weight. Chi 1, chi 2, kappa, sorry, kappa 1, kappa 2 is uh, just constant. So uh, in this case, the, uh, these two parameters are proportional with the rate mu, right? Okay. Um, so initially, uh, we, because uh, we don't like the signs of the second derivative of the ratio. So instead of that, so uh, based on empirical experiments, so we made assumption like this. The difference, I mean, not exactly the same, the, the proportional, almost proportional. So as a function of C, uh, kappa and chi is proportional up to epsilon factors. Okay. And the other assumptions, I think that that's usual, I mean, increasing function, positive function. In such case, um, oh, so this is joint work with the 
명주 체인 지운리. So um, in this case, we can prove that the global existence of solutions. Um, so compared to the Winkler's result, actually, um, okay. First hand, in this case, the bounded domain under these assumptions. So I think the, okay, this assumption in a way technical. So basically, we don't want this kind of assumption. So also we. Need another assumption like this. Uh, okay, that's the previous. But uh, eventually, we realize that this assumption is not necessary. So, without this assumption, we can prove more or less under the assumption B, we can show the existence of global regular solutions. Okay, okay next. Um, okay, this is uh, the weak solution in 3D. 3D is a much more complicated. Navier's toxic equation 3D is a big open problem, so um, it's unreasonable to expect the regularity of the models in 3D. But however, uh, if you have a more restricted <coughs> conditions, exactly the two parameters are proportional, then uh, as a function of C, then uh, we can establish the weak solution in this class. Okay. And also later we prove that I mean the, we have some blob regularity cri blob criteria. So in other words, if you have a finite time blows up where the t star is the, the maximal existence time of the of the solution, then uh, this quantity should be infinite. In two D case, uh, only depends on the n. And 3D case, also the fluid equation, flu fluid uh, field is involved too. It's like a Seren's condition, which is well-known regularity criteria if you only consider the Navier-Stokes equation. But in our case, uh, couple each other. So also, um, somehow the effect of the N is important. We don't like that. So um, and anyway, uh, so uh, one other thing uh, we I think important is this uh, scaling invariant. Actually, this equation has a scaling invariant, uh, which I'll explain later. So, oh, oh, oops, sorry, let me. Uh, so all this regularity criteria is uh, in a way optimal because uh, these guys are scaling invariants. Okay, and also we proved that in, the paper, in, in this paper, uh, if the initial data of the concentrations of oxygen is relatively small, an infinity normal is small, then uh, solutions are also global. Moreover, um, we can establish the time decay of this. Uh, I think the, uh, there is uh, some room to improve this time decay because, uh, uh, but uh, I, 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 when we prove this one, somehow technically it's not, it was not easy to improve this, but uh, it doesn't seem to be optimal because uh, if you remember the heat equations, then linear case, then the, there is uh, the usual decay is like heat kernels. That's the optimal. But uh, for instance, in 2D case, uh, what, you, what you have is just uh, negative half decay which is not optimal because uh, in 2D case, heat kernels has a decay like uh, minus one. So uh, maybe at that time we thought that the, because we only assume that the uh, smallness of the C is zero, so it's not clear, but eventually <laughs> it's also small. So I think that this is it's not optimal. So we also try to improve this uh, decay rate. Actually, we also made an improvement so uh, in this presentation, recent, recent result is not only regularity, but also we improve the decay rate too. Okay, um, this is a scaling invariance of the solutions. Namely, because our domain is the whole space, uh, under this uh, scaling, actually, n lambda, c lambda, u lambda also satisfy equations. Uh, initial conditions are slightly changed because of lambda factor. However, this is an uh, important point, I think, for decay rate, also regularity method too. Mm -hmm. Okay, so maybe skip. The, all these are just uh, previous results. Uh, okay, sometimes the photicity equation may be easier. In 2D case, the, uh, so one of the difficulties is the control of the pressure when it comes to navier stokes equation. But photicity equation in 2D case is useful because uh, we don't have a 
uh, vortex stretching term. So the, the structure of the vertex equation like this. Actually, by using this, we, uh, what it proved that uh, one of the this is also one of the the previous results, which is the uh, maybe next uh, so time asymptotics. Not only decay rate, but uh, uh, we also establish what's the, the main profile of the solutions as time tends to infinity. So, uh, but assumption is a bit stronger than the previous. So the uh, the L1, L infinite of C0, gradient of the C0, L2, all these are scaling invariant, and then omega 0 is the vorticity. So uh, all these quantities are small, then um, solution decay like the optimal 1 over t. Uh, this is a total mass which is preserved all time. And vorticity is like this. Gamma is the total circulation is also preserved for all time, a priori. And then uh, the main profile of the n is the just nothing but heat kernel times total mass. So the main profile this and the remaining is uh, the remainder uh, has a much faster than faster decay than 1 over t. I mean faster than 1 over t. That's also we observed. Okay, um, so this is the uh, main result of, of my presentation today. So the kappa and chi are parameters. So we don't have any proportionality of the kappa and chi, uh, just uh, nothing but positivity and then increasing. As I mentioned, this is the necessary conditions. I mean, it should be zero at the zero. Otherwise, the problem doesn't make sense because the best conservation does cause a problem. Otherwise, anyway, and uh, then the main result read as follows. So um, basically, there is no restrictions of size of the initial data for any data if just uh, sufficiently regular. Then uh, actually, we can find the solution in this class, unique. So all solutions are regular as long as initial data are sufficiently good. Mm -hmm. uh, in addition, uh, if the solutions are regular, then we have this time decay too. Mm -hmm. So I think, the, uh, for instance, P, P, if P is infinite, then uh, we have a decay like uh, minus one, o, 1 over t. So it's optimal, right? Uh, to be honest, we don't have uh, asymptotic profile yet because uh, because we don't have any control of the size of the initial data. Uh, if you have uh, initial data, uh, size, I mean, smaller, small list of initial data, then we have also asymptotics. However, in this case, we succeed in improving the time decay, but the asymptotics are a bit complicated for large data. Okay, maybe. This uh, would be further study. Anyway, so let me uh, give the brief idea how we prove this uh, global existence of, I mean, the regular solutions of the models. Okay, uh, so the, the first observation is the, uh, the regularity of the drift equations. Um, so many people recently, for instance, Nadarov, Fural, Cheva, and also Seregin, Svera, Silvester, Gelatos, um, not only those people, actually many people are uh, studying this heat equation with the drift terms. This is a scalar equation. So uh, what is the uh, regularity of, of this one under the under minimal kind of assumptions of U? Okay. So uh, our situation is uh, similar because the uh, linear part of this um, is a drift equation with coupled with uh, <coughs> each other. When it comes to the equations of n, equations of c, so where the u is the uh, velocity field, right? Uh, so all, all these guys are uh, coupled each other, so it's not easy. But what is known is that uh, in two-dimensional case, uh, theta going to be held continuous as long as u is in L4, uh, which is a scaling invariant class in two-dimensional case. In generally, n-dimensional case, this should be n plus 2. So in 3D case, 5. L5 and so on and so um, so we, So uh, our starting point is, um, maybe let me skip the, uh, OK, 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 here. So uh, this is the drift equation. And then 
we compare this equation with the equations of C, which is concentrations of oxygen. So what's the difference? Uh, equations, uh, all the linear part is the same, uh, the nonlinear part is, but it has a sign. Because all concentrations are not negative, so it's a negative sign. So we have uh, some kind of a comparison. Suppose uh, we, consider the, uh, uh, we consider this equation with the same boundary as a C. Then, because of the positivity of solutions, this is kind of an upper solution. So as long as U is L4, then we can show the uh, C is uh, held continuous. That's the uh, one observation we can do. So actually, that is the case. But uh, the one of the difficulty in our case, we do not know initially uh, U is L4 or not. It should be. Uh, it should be true. Otherwise, then we cannot apply this theory, right? So, first of all, we have to show that uh, U is L4, um, as long as the solutions exist, a priori, and then then you can also show that the C is held continuous, and so that's the initial, the first observation. Okay, let me go back. Okay. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay, then uh, suppose it, it, it is successful. That means uh, C is now held continuous. Then locally, this is a fixed point, X naught T naught. And then uh, we rewrite the uh, chemotactic sensitivity and consumption rate in this way. We subtract the reference value plus this. So I did nothing, just uh, subtract uh, some exact values. Right. But uh, because of the uh, Kais and Kappa's uh, smooth functions uh, as the functions of C, so this somehow small in the neighbor of, of, of that reference point. Uh, what about this? This might be large, but uh, it is proportional. I mean, we prove that as long as the Kais and Kappa proportional each other, of course, uh, that's the global case, right? But uh, in this case, locally, these two values are proportional. These two guys are small in the neighbor. I mean, this is a local analysis. So one hand, we have a small list. On the other hand, these guys are proportional. So we subtract one hand, and then the other, we use the small list. That's the idea. Okay. More precisely, um, we start with the uh, um, establishment of the local solution. Uh, in this class. So then um, there is a list, because of we know that the local existence of regular solution for uh, regular data, initial data. So T0 T is the maximal times of existence of regular solution. We suppose that. So either finite or infinite. Infinite case done. Suppose this is a finite. Then um, is well on that. I mean, we also establish local I mean, regularity criteria, block criteria. So if t naught maximal time of existence is finite, then this should be infinite. Actually, L2 is enough. L2 should be infinite. Then, um, for convenience, we introduced these notational con conventions. I mean, B, X, R is a ra uh, ball of radius R. By the way, how much time? Five minutes? Or ten minutes? Uh, the parabolic cylinders. Okay. So in this embedding in two dimensions. Okay. Okay. Just briefly, how we have the L4 for the equations of free. So the difficulty is first of all to use this kind of a plan. I mean, held a continuous of the C. We establish the L4 uniformly, independent of uh, you know a, a priori estimate we need. So. Um, but this is Navier-Stokes equation with n. Uh, what is known about uh, n is just uh, a priori L1, because the total mass is just preserved. So that's not enough in general. Uh, but uh, in a way, we are successfully proved that the U uh, could be, uh, actually, it is in this class. L4 is also fine. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Uh, we just decompose in two parts. Um, in a way, the uh, equation we realize that is uh, linear. I mean, the phi is a given function. So, of course, nonlinearity has uh, drifted terms from the Navier Stokes equation. But Navier Stokes, 2D Navier Stokes equation is well studied. Somehow, the structure of the 
uh, drip detomb is well studied, I guess. Anyway, we compose in two parts. One part of this is uh, just a Stokes problem with the uh, external force with the N. The other one is the uh, W, which satisfies this equation, which is a modified Navier-Stokes equation, uh, comes from the effect of V. But incompressibility applied to this, uh, actually the uh, energy estimation is working. And for this Stokes problem, we can use the Drummond formulas so that uh, so you apply the n, n is at l1 in space at infinity in time. Then at least you can establish the uh, this class. You can find the solution in this class L4. Then we are done. Uh, I mean, at least we can say the uh, we can we can apply the, the result of the drift equation. In other words, C is the uh, well the continuous. Uh, it's not direct, but uh, we can use the comparison with this drift equation with the exact right hand side is zero by, by the uh, comparison. It's a kind of a sub solution compared to this. Uh, and then positivity implies the we can control oscillations, estimate, so that, uh, yep, so it's a uh, held uh, well continuous, it, 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 it established. And the next one, uh, we, as I mentioned before, so the idea is the we rewrite the right hand side of the equation sense here in this manner. So one hand, this okay, this is a local analysis. So I think the, this is the reference value. So, so basically, this is the fixed numbers. This is small. This small. This is uh, some proportionality. Okay. So uh, in the name of the reference point, this guy is uh, controllable because of well, the continuous. Right? And then we test the uh, log with the test functions, I mean compactly supported test nice functions. And then um, the right hand side you have this one hand and the other uh, the problematic term is this. On the other hand, to the second equation we apply the minus Laplace test function. Then you have this also together with, oh sorry, this. I think the other terms are some, somehow manageable, but uh, these two guys are not easy. Uh, but you see, uh, if you compare to these guys and these guys, then the same, but with a different value. But point is the signs are opposite. The minus kappa zero. This is uh, plus chi zero. So we multiply the ratio factor each other constant, and then add together then the right hand side just gone, right? So then the remaining term is the, this and this, but uh, at least in the local neighborhood of that reference point, this is relatively small. We, we use the small list, so then we uh, observed the left. So this, uh, okay, that's the idea. Okay, okay, so. Uh, let me briefly give the uh, how, how we, uh, because, but this is a local analysis, but uh, our sh proof should be global, right? Okay, uh, so the, the uh, more precisely, suppose T naught is the maximal time of existence, and then suppose it's a finite, then, um, then you could find the sequence of points which converge to the maximal times of the T naught, so that uh, these values are arbitrarily large, I mean, sequence bigger than K, okay? And then there are two cases. So this sequence of point has a limit point or maybe uh, goes away to the infinity, right? So the one case is uh, the, the limit, ca limit point case is easy because uh, the limit point actually held a continuous point. But uh, if you have uh, you know, the, any sequence of point is uh, arbitrary larger than these contradictions, that's the easy case. Uh, more complicated case, I think the uh, it doesn't have a limit point, maybe just approach it to the infinite case. So then, without lots of generality, in such case, you can find uh, some neighborhood of that point uh, so that uh, the values are just bigger than k. Anyway, uh, we can use the held continuity information. Okay, this, I think this is one hand. And then the other case is, but uh, the error mass is always preserved, right? And then, uh, this is nothing but this, but this is the uh, sequence of points where the uh, this is a parabolic cylinder, which is uh, definitely subset, some of the subset of the R2. Then 
but this is uh, bigger than k in the name of that. Actually, k over 2 because uh, uh, we assume that it's bigger than k, but uh, this in the neighborhood of that, maybe because held a continuity, this is bigger than k over 2, so this is infinite. This is contradiction. So, therefore, uh, the maximal times of this should be infinite. That's the, uh, uh, that's the sketch of proof. And then temporal decay, I don't think I have uh, enough time, but uh, I think the one hand uh, we used the previous result, which is not the optimal, but we have a decay rate as long as solution exists. And then we use the uh, previous result that so that uh, uh, there is a for large time so that uh, now the values are small, then smallest result give the uh, improvement and then kind of a bootstrapping argument eventually not only LP and also control LP uh, gradient estimate too so that we use the improved estimate of the N or C or W and so on. then we repeat this process again and again then we can have a estimate okay so uh, sorry about that but I just uh, I want to skip the details okay thank you for your attention